Yep. Okay, when you get your star reference sheet, there are several things you need to do before you start doing any math. First, write a number line from negative 10 to positive 10. Next, where it says slope intercept form, that because y, y equals mx plus b represents a non proportional relationship, label that non proportional. And in a direct variation, y equals kx, that because there is no y intercept, that is a proportional relationship. So label that as well. Also, circle your b. Draw an arrow, label it y-intercept, circle your m, draw an arrow, label it slope. Out here to the margin, draw your perfect square number line from 1 to 15, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 144, 169, 196, 225. Next, where your slope of the line equation or formula is here, your y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, note that this is your rise over run. Once you get that part done, flip it over to the back. Draw a diagram of the real number system. We remember that the largest box is the rational numbers. And this is irrational over here by itself. Next, you have integers, whole, and then natural. Seeing your transformations, we've been learning those by memory for quite some time now. So you got x plus a, it's right, x minus a, it's left, y plus b is up, y minus b is down. If I flip over the x, that's x negative y. If I flip over the y, it's negative x comma y. Now for the rotations, it's a little more tricky. I would write my degrees twice, 90, 180, 270. Label these clockwise. Label again, 90, 180, 270. Label these counterclockwise. Next to them, I write my variables the way that I know they go in the order. So y, x, x, y, y, x, again, y x x y y x then I would draw my coordinate plane put the signs inside of the coordinate plane of course I know that this is my y axis this is my x so in the first quadrant I have positive positive in the fourth quadrant I have positive negative in the third quadrant I have negative negative and in the second quadrant I have negative positive and then I actually uh, map out what my rotation would be so if I'm going 90 degrees clockwise I will be moving one quadrant to the right so my x would be positive my uh, my y would be positive and my x would be negative 
180, both are negative. 270, y is negative, x is still positive. Then with clockwise, I move the opposite direction. So my y would be negative, x would be positive. 180 is negative, negative. And 270 would be y positive, x negative. And I am done with my transformations from there. Oh, scientific notation. Note that there can only be one digit in front of the decimal. Only one digit belongs in front of the decimal, so that should give you a hint about how many places you should, you should move your decimal or what your um, base should be when you're moving your, or co coefficient rather, should be when you move it, you're moving your decimal for converting a number from standard form to scientific notation. All right, a few more pointers. Um, along with your transformations, you also need to write your dilation, which is... xy yields kx comma ky where my k is my scale factor um also it might be a good idea um when you're talking about a function maybe draw you a sample mapping this is x this is y domain range note x cannot repeat in a function and maybe draw you a little sample mapping here and remember your domain is your set of x values your range is set of, your set of y's also remember an ordered pair is written x comma y your x value always comes first and your y value comes second. Um, also, back to the front of our reference chart, we got our k here. And that is our constant of variation. And to find that, we have to remember that we divide y over x to find the, the constant of variation or constant of proportionality. Um, on your coordinate plane, remember the place where um, your x and your y axis cross is called the origin which is zero comma zero and I think that about wraps it up we got functions we got the real number system scientific notation transformations um, even some uh, spiral in here direct variation all of those things are here um, also a proportion remember your little proportion box Um, also note your slope is your rate of change and the y-intercept is where you start. So if you're graphing, you always start at your y-intercept. Your slope is your rate of change.